G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday afternoon here in Australia, market down again. We've dropped under the 1.3 trillion. Oh, but look, Bitcoin's still hanging in there. It hasn't really broken that $31,000 level. Now we've still got, you know, sort of the weekend to come stateside. And again, you know, it's not looking pretty technically on the charts. That doesn't mean that, you know, it's going to go down, but it's definitely not looking great at the moment. And all the gains, the altcoins, well, not all of them, you know, but most of the gains they've made, at least in the last week, have been lost. But if you got in probably about two weeks ago, you still might be in profit in some of them. But again, you know, you're buying these at massive discounts at the moment. Is it the best price you can buy them at? No, maybe not. Maybe in another sort of couple of weeks time, they could be, you know, another 50 to 60% cheaper. Who knows? But that is exactly what it comes down to. No one truly knows. I'm still hopeful that Bitcoin can kind of hang in there around this $30,000 level. And look, even if Bitcoin travels sideways for the next few months, I am more than okay with that because I will just continue to buy it. That's what I do. I don't really like to buy things when they're at all-time highs. Sometimes if they've just broken their all-time high, you can get on them. Uh, and get a good and you know get a good run out of it but really once something's at an all-time high you really should be careful when you're investing in it and that goes for pretty much anything now again I do need to say this all the time that's not financial advice I'm not a financial advisor that's just my personal opinion and you got to work it out for yourself but for me things at all-time highs I generally am cautious when investing in them but again, that's me. All right, let's have a look. 1.29 trillion. So again, that's, you know, that hurts a bit. Bitcoin dominance still just hanging around 45% there because altcoins, you know, they go up for a little bit and then they get wrecked. Uh, and again, if Bitcoin does decide to take a, a big dump from here and go back down and test lower levels, these altcoins are going to get crushed. I mean, absolutely crushed. It's going to be, <laughs> yeah, it, it won't be good. All right, so... It's not looking great here, as we can see. Uh, really, you know, some stable coins are the only things that are in the green by the looks of it. But has anything done well? Let's have a look. Any kind of movers. Oh, look out. Basic attention token. Nice. Had a bit of a pump. Uh, NEM had a little bit of a pump. Raven, FTX. So look, a couple of coins with a few kind of moves there. And then we're really starting to, you know, get into the stable coin sort of stuff. So again, considering the market's down 1.8, I'm guessing there's going to be uh, some sort of losers. But hey, that's good for basic attention token. Quite nice. Ooh. There we go. Axie Infinity. Not looking great. Stacks. I mean, don't get me wrong. They've had a great, you know, couple of sort of week or two but you know if you bought the all-time high then you're down 20 percent stacks down rune thor chain so we got something uh a new story about thor chain we know about the hack there uh kucoin look some a few double digit losses and then you know we're just into the single digit losses so it's not awful but i mean you know matic 80 cents holy moly that is that's good that is a good price. Again, I'm not saying the best price, but it's come a long way from the kind of two cents that it was. So again, maybe a good entry point. I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And as I've said, you know, in all my other videos, I'd just be very careful investing in any altcoins at the moment. Unless you truly believe them and you, you, you love the fundamentals and you think they're going to be here in four or five years time and you can handle the downside, you know, go right ahead. But just know that if Bitcoin, you know, it's sitting at 31,000. If it drops down to, you know, 20,000 and maybe even go lower, which it's never done before, but it's already doing things that we haven't really seen it do before, altcoins are going to just get, yeah, really, really wrecked, unfortunately. That's what's <laughs> going to happen. And all altcoins, because, I mean, if Bitcoin drops from 34,000 down to, you know, 20,000 or even less, then even that's getting really wrecked. So just a consideration, something to keep in mind. All right, it's ugly, it's not good. Let's have a look at the chart, see what it's telling us. So Bitcoin, it is just hanging in there ever so slightly. It's right at the bottom of the Bollinger Bands at the moment, but it just hasn't really broke and it's sitting right on that kind of line, as we can see, right where it's gone to a number of times. Well, it's probably, no, nah, yep, it's sitting right there. So on that 31,000 kind of 500 level-ish thereabouts, now, again, it still could go lower. I'm really going to get mostly 
you know, I'll be worried if it breaks that $30,000 level. Look, it can go lower than here. That's not really going to say too much. And again, the Wyckoff accumula accumulation uh, chart, you know, I guess it's kind of been broken. It's not playing out exactly like it. But the problem is all the big people know that we now know. So guess what? All the old models that have been around for a long time, I'm not saying they won't ever get used again, but if too many people know that they're being used, it's just not going to happen. It's just straight up not going to happen. The big players who want to manipulate markets and push prices up and push prices down aren't going to simply let everyone else cotton on. Now with the, you know, the world of YouTube like we have now and things like that and just the internet, it's going to be harder and harder for them to you know, manipulate the markets they, the way they have before and particularly uh, on the blockchain when we're going to be able to see what they're doing. But that doesn't mean that they can't do it. It just means it's going to be harder for them to get away with it away with it without other people knowing. So, yeah, for me, you know, I, I look at Wyckoff accumulation and distribution. I mean, the distribution was, you know, textbook classic. But then once people knew what was going on and they started to call this accumulation, I think the big whales and that, and you know, the big, uh, you know, market makers and all that have started to, you know, think about how they're trying to execute these plans at the moment and, you know, yeah, I just, I don't think things will play out exactly the way they have. We're going to have to look for new market patterns being created. That would be my gut feeling. Now, the RSI, as we can saw, it broke. But what we can see here is there's a little tick up. And again, that's because we've got a little bit of a green candle here. But this can easily turn over uh, and get quite ugly. And same thing on the sort of MACD. We can see it did cross over and it looks like it's just going to flatten out and then maybe hopefully come back up. But look, if the price dumps, then it won't. Again, like I said, unfortunately, the technicals on the charts, they just aren't looking great. All right, we're going to get onto some stories because there's a couple of good ones here. All right, data shows decentralized finance has taken a hit in quarter two, but is still booming. And I, again, I think DeFi is going to be one of the major boomers you know in in years to come not right now particularly when there's a downturn in the market and things like that but yeah hence why i have such a large position in DeFi. now not large as i have a whole stack of money dumped into DeFi, but large as in out of my altcoins it's you know my bigger percentages you know i don't have too many altcoins that really are over about one or two percent but I have a couple of DeFi plays that are a little bit over that. But again, most of my holdings is in Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum. Uh, and Ethereum is the biggest one, or at least it wasn't last I looked, but Ethereum starting to go, to go down. But that's where I keep most of my money. That's what I figure you know, is the safest bet in cryptocurrency. So anyway, moving on. While decentralized finance took a hit at Q2, stats show there is show, sorry, there is an important movement in these protocols. Data taken from Masari's Q2 21 DeFi review show that decentralized exchanges are busy, are busy uh, settling important numbers. Now there's a ton of DeFi kind of stuff we can have a look at here. Terraformer Labs. So again, DeFi, it's down at the moment, but it is far from out. Terraformer Labs, the South Korean company behind the Terra public blockchain, has raised $150 million from a handful of major crypto investors, including Arrington XRP Capital, Pantera Capital, Digital, sorry, Galaxy Digital, and Tower Block Capital. The $150 million commitment is to Terra's ecosystem fund, which Terraform Labs uses to sponsor projects to be built on the Terra blockchain. So there's still plenty of DeFi stuff going on, and it doesn't stop there. I mean, we can go over here. Harmony announces a $1 million hackathon aimed at merging traditional finance with DeFi. This, I think, will be big. The hackathon will run uh, for roughly six weeks from August 15th to September 30th and include four challenges from three different categories. So the hackathon would be focused on bringing in more people from traditional finance for challenges bridging their fields and decentralized finance. The protocol said there would be four challenges in each category of social wallets and keyless security, cross-chain and trustless bridges and cross-border with fintech integration. So again, DeFi, you know, it, it's still growing. And look, we're, we're not done there either. So what is the DeFi Pulse Index? So the DeFi Pulse Index lets you buy one token to gain exposure to the biggest tokens in decentralized finance. This is really, really interesting. And 
I think this is going to be the better way for most people to go. It, it'll just be, if they're not sort of, you don't have to be that tech savvy, but you know, people who simply aren't using crypto right now, this will be the easiest way for them. And I think this is what big businesses might uh, eventually get onto as well. But again, we'll have to wait and see. So the DeFi Pulse Index consists of the 10 most popular DeFi tokens available on Ethereum. Lend, YFI, Comp, SNX, Maker, Ren, Kyber Network, Loopring, Balancer, uh, and Rep V2. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that is. So instead of buying all these DeFi tokens and having to manage your portfolio yourself, you can just buy a single ERC20 token that provides exposure to all 10 tokens. And the token rebalances uh, monthly to reflect, reflect the state of the market. This is what I think big business will probably do. This will be just easier for them and they'll get some exposure to all of it. Again, not, no guarantees. I don't know that for sure, but I just get the feeling like that's what they might do. And also, I just think it's an easier way for newer people uh, to the space. Because again, if you don't really know how to use crypto, it's not that it's really that hard. But again, for people who just don't know and maybe don't have the time and all the rest of it, this actually sounds good and I myself might even look to uh, get onto this. So again, DeFi, it's not out, it's still growing. There's, you know, the hackathon with the $1 million reward to try and, you know, onboard, you know, traditional finance and things like that. This is really starting to move. Now, unfortunately, we've got to go and see some stuff about Binance that is, they're doing it real hard at the moment. And I don't think they're out by any means, but they've got some challenges so the doj tells fbi and others stop singing appreciate sorry stop signing appreciation notes for binance so the doj is the department of justice and they have said the exchange used the letters as proof that they are actively uh, helping these agencies in criminal probes however this behavior seems to have bothered agents of these state organizations who argue the exchange is bound to cooperate with these investigations by law i mean that's a bit of a, a two-edged sword right there i mean they're saying oh they had to anyway yeah but they also are aren't they so they are doing the right thing there's you know there's powers out there that don't like Binance and they don't want Binance to succeed. Hence why Binance is trying to move to decentralize and things like that and has no central office and all sorts of things. But I really do think Binance is going to have to just get fully regulated or they're going to struggle. And look, there is a story coming up in just a sec that I think is going to uh, lean towards them getting more regulated as well. And the fact that, you know, they've brought on some people, Brian Brooks, uh, and I forget who the big guy over in the UK was to try and help them, you know, get compliant and things like that. But at the moment, Binance are facing some stiff opposition. And I mean, even here. So Visa, MasterCard, monitor Binance's regulatory compliances and as more regulators scrutinize the crypto exchange. So, I mean, it's, they're basically, now they're just monitoring at the moment. They haven't shut it off, but that's what they might do. They might go, all right, no one can, you know, use their credit cards or debit cards or MasterCards or anything like that to buy crypto on Binance. And that would then be an issue. So again, Binance are up against it. Now, again, even more. So the world's largest crypto exchange, Binance, has disabled trading of stock tokens just three months after launching it. So they were you know, seen as kind of revolutionary when they did this. And again, they copped a lot of flack and a lot of heat. And three months after doing it, they've already pulled it and uh, started to stop this. So, I mean, good and bad, again, you know, Binance can see that it's going to be a big issue with regulators and the rest of it, so they have stopped it. Now, whether it's going to be stopped permanently or not, that's what we're waiting to see. But again, I, I, you know, anyone who's invested in Binance and that and uses Binance, I personally wouldn't be too worried. God, I wish that'd just go away for now. Anyway, I wouldn't be too worried about it. You know, it's just a teething thing. You know, there's, again, big players out there who don't like the fact that Binance is the biggest exchange in the world uh, and they are sort of going after them and trying to pull them back a peg and all the rest of it. But I really do think Binance will most likely get, you know, get regulated and, you know, follow the line, as they sort of say. And I think they will, you know, they will remain one of the biggest. And again, if not, maybe just simply stay the biggest exchanges out there. But 
They've got an uphill battle going against them at the moment. All right, so Thorchain, as I said, we were talking about this the other day, how they got hacked and they lost, you know, it's unsure. Somewhere between sort of 7.1 and 25 million is what was said. Uh, and I was saying, I wonder how they would do that because someone's lost money and, you know, you don't want your sort of investors losing your money. So Thorchain is doing exactly what I thought they would do. They're tapping into their own treasury to repay the $5 million in Ethereum after the attack. And I think that's the right thing to do. And it's good that they have that there because unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of, you know, newer DeFi platforms that get hacked and they just don't have the liquidity. And in all fairness, most of them look more like a, a rug pull than anything. But congratulations to Thorchain uh, for, you know, looking after the people who invested and hopefully they have, you know, found the bugs and, you know, they get uh, some more audits and things like that because they sounded like they're a really promising project. And, you know, a lot of chains after they get hacked never come back. Some do, some have. It's not always like a death sentence for them, but, you know, hopefully Thorchain can do that. And, you know, in all honesty, if the prices continue to go down, I might have to get some Thorchain. We'll, we'll have a look and wait and see at the moment. I'm, yeah, again, proceeding with caution with the with the altcoins. All right. Janet Yellen to assemble regulators over stable coin concerns. So this is going to uh, play into the last story we have. So this coming Monday, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen will meet with top regulators for a discussion of stable coins. Government officials have been expressing concern about stable coins and Tether in particular. So... If you don't know, and I'm sure you probably do, the issue with stable coins is anyone can sort of make a stable coin, but then the issue that comes after that, that's the bigger issue, because it's not hard to make a stable coin. Any, you know, sort of, you know, programmer could get out there and make one. It's then, is it actually backed by real money? Because you could just make it and say that it is, and then go out there and say, all right, and start buying all these cryptos with something that's not actually backed by a dollar. Uh, and particular particularly uh, Tether, sorry, they've had a lot of issues. Now, in saying that, we go over here. So Tether hasn't printed any new USDT in three weeks. Now, they did say there's a th uh, three possible explanations. So the first one is, you know, the China crackdown because Tether's really big over in China. So has that kind of been a part of it? Uh I would say it definitely has been a part of it. Now, whether it's played that big a part, I don't know. I do think it's a combination of all three of these, actually. So USDC is on the rise. People really trust USDC because, you know, it's been, you know, sort of regulated and, you know, they're transparent and all the rest of it. And so at least on the surface, it appears as though it really is back to one for one. But, I mean, they did a sort of semi uh, probe on Tether and it looked like they were kind of backed one for one as well. So... Yeah, hard to say about that. And then the last one is what we were uh, talking about. Well, no, this is uh, Crypto Bears versus Tether's vulnerability, but I think this is more the other one. You know, I think if Tether weren't doing the right thing and they've probably got word of this, then they may be looking to do an exit strategy. Uh, again, who knows, and I hope not, because that's really going to affect the... Uh, whole crypto space or maybe again maybe they're not doing uh, an exit pull or anything like that but maybe they have simply stopped where they are because they have you know again according to that kind of semi uh, report that was done on before they had enough assets to back them one for one so maybe uh, now they are making sure that they actually are legit uh, if the you know governments really do come after them because again that last one was just a bit of a brief look uh, they didn't go right through the sort of books and again, it just appeared on paper that they were, you know, had enough assets to back up uh, their stable coins. And if they're going to go forwards, they're probably going to have to now make sure that they actually do and that they can prove it. All right, look, that's it from me. They're the interesting stories that I found and I was interested in. I hope you found them interesting as well. If you did, please go ahead and give me a like. That'd be much appreciated. But again, really, all I'm focusing on at the moment is this Bitcoin chart and it's holding on you know, for dear life at the moment with these bottom marks over here. But again, really, we're kind of more looking for down around about here. Can we hold that, you know, sort of $30,000 level? Uh, you know, not so worried if we wick down, but if we get closes below 30000 then it's really, you know, 
this is that kind of last tiny bit of support we have and then after that we're heading down to something like sort of 24,000 maybe even lower and I shudder to think how low we might go if 64,000 was the actual top all right that's it for me hate to be the bearer of bad news stay safe be kind to one another pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment but I'll see you next time